Okay, good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Hey, that's a little better. Excellent. We're here to recognize uh, our heroes, uh, best of the best, from the uh, fourth quarter and the annual awards. And uh, we're going to start off with prayer. Our chaplain is on vacation, but we have uh, Chaplain Frank Smith. Chaplain Smith, come on and get us started. Good morning, everyone. God bless you. We see how, at times, the national, state, and local news media loses sight of what enforcement agencies have pledged, how they pledge to uphold the law, and how they react to the task before them. You are the police. Your titles may be different, officers, deputies, sheriff, troopers, etc. But you are here to arrest those who have broken the law. You did not write the law. You may disagree with the law, but you will enforce it. If a suspect runs away, you will chase them. If they fight, you will fight back. If they shoot at, at you, you will shoot back. Behind your badge is a heart like ours. You bleed, you think, you love, and yes, you can even be killed. There are thousands of brothers and sisters who are the same as you. You will lay down your lives for the people you serve and your companions. You stand watch together. The thin blue line protecting the prey from the predators, the good from the bad. You are the husbands and wives, the fathers and mothers, the sisters and brothers and uncles, neighbors and friends, taking a solemn oath to protect and serve you and all of your loved ones. Somehow the public has forgotten the truth, understanding what it means to protect and serve, and the sacrifices you may be called upon with that pledge. So let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, may these brave men and women we honor today and the many volunteers who support them bring a sense of understanding that as police officers they have sworn a sacred duty to enforce the laws of the land, protect those from all who would do them harm, and come to the aid of those who seek their help. May their actions, words, and deeds through your guidance be carried out with knowledge, courage, and integrity. We ask this. And all we hold in the silence of our hearts, in the name of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Chaplain Smith. Nice, nice words. First, we're going to start off, uh, as I always do, recognizing uh, citizens in our community. And I tell you often that we can't do this job without the support of our citizens. And this morning we have one, uh, Mr. Richard Mengi, who has supported us for Four decades, that's 40 years. I know some of you weren't born then, uh, but for 40 years. Come on up, Mr. Mengi. <clears throat> you, can, you can bring that to you. He has supported the Florida Sheriff's Office uh, Association for 40 years through three sheriffs, Sheriff Norval, Sheriff Knowles, and myself. And uh, because of his support, uh, the Florida Sheriff's Association enacts legislation or supports legislation that keeps us all safe uh, here in the state of Florida. So we thank you for your uh, support and your commitment for these past four decades. Steve. Thank you, Sheriff. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Next, we have uh, Michelle Hernandez. Sergeant Hernandez. As I always tell you, if you invest in yourself, you make yourself so valuable, you become priceless. And that's exactly what Michelle has done. She has uh, completed her FBI Leadership Trilogy, which uh, you did not bring the award up here, but it's back there. And um, she just received her award, and uh, we thank you for investing in yourself. You're welcome. <laughs> Next is Darren Mingier from uh, Indian River State College with the CGI Leadership Awards. Darren? Appreciate uh, yeah, inviting us here today again, Sheriff. Uh, it's always a pleasure and honor for us to present awards, uh, especially when it comes to leadership. Uh, today we get to honor uh, two more St. Lucie uh, deputies, uh, Sergeant Donetta Johnson and Deputy Matt Wright. You guys want to come on up? <laughs> Most of you have heard my... Uh, my spiel before. <laughs> Way to go. <laughs> awesome. awesome. 
Can't wait to get her in the classroom. Yeah, know, she has a ton of spirit. Um, you guys have heard my spiel before, but uh, uh, this thing is not easy to attain. It's uh, 288 hours of leadership, phil uh, phil uh, philosophy, and practical application. Um, it's been three and a half years, and only 22 have earned the certificate, so it's a big deal. The program consists of six courses, uh, CG uh, ethics, uh, leader ethics, rather, Florida general instructor techniques, um, the line supervision, mental management, uh, building and maintaining a sound organization, and developing and maintaining a sound behavioral climate. So those six courses take 288 hours uh, to get complete. Uh, to complete. Uh, St. Lucie County, you guys ought to be very, very proud of yourselves. Uh, you guys hold it, uh, uh, the record by a wide margin. You have nine of the 22 awards to date, uh, and six of those nine were awarded to detention officers. So big deal there. Good job, uh, corrections. So without further ado, I'd like to congratulate Sergeant Annetta Johnson and uh, Deputy Matt Wright. Uh, Matt was the 21st awardee, and Annetta is the 22nd, so congrats. <laughs> Representing the Department of Detention, Major Pat Ty will... Uh, Honor the honorees. Thank you, Sheriff. Good morning. Um, the awards for the Department of Detention and Court Services. The first one is Deputy of the, of the First Quarter, Deputy Jennifer Keefe. Come on up. Jennifer joined our agency in June of 2015 as a deputy sheriff assigned to the Department of Detention. She is primarily assigned to the medical unit, which handles the health care needs of all inmates. Their condition can be as simple as a flu or declining health of elderly population to more complex issues like severe mental illness. Nonetheless, the medical unit has experienced an increase of inmates who need medical assistance. Special attention must be observed in the medical unit because of the numerous inmates' conditions and requirements. When Deputy Keefe arrived on shift January 8th, she noticed a house alone inmate who had two cellmates. That could be a problem. She immediately notified her supervisor and, resol and res <coughs> resolved this housing issue. She transferred inmates within the medical unit to protect the house alone inmate. Her attention to detail kept the inmate population from harm and the agency from litigation. On January 23rd, she was conducting medical rounds with a nurse. As an inmate was walking away, Deputy Keefe noticed something on the inmate's back. Deputy Keefe discovered the inmate had fentanyl patches on her skin. Under the direction of Deputy Keefe, the nurse removed the patches. Deputy Keefe's observation and swift response prevented harm to the inmate and exposure to others. Also, during this time, as the award was going through, she has recently been acting sergeant of the B-Wing, correct, on several occasions, and has done a remarkable job. As you can see, Deputy Jennifer Keefe supervises the medical unit with great attention to detail. It is for these reasons she is our deputy of the first quarter. Congratulations. <laughs> Supervisor of the first quarter. Sergeant Zell Cooper. Fair, firm, and consistent are three traits necessary to manage the jail and its inmate population. Sergeant Cooper has these traits and more. Sergeant Cooper supervises the Delta Pods. These pods house some of the most volatile and violent inmates Plus, the population for this wing is larger than most jails on the Treasure Coast. I think the population of Delta Pods is 650 inmates. Sergeant Cooper is known for his even keel personality, especially when dealing with these unpredictable inmates. One example of this occurred on the morning of February 16th. An inmate became combative and insulted one of Sergeant Cooper's deputies. Bad move. A call for assistance was given, and Sergeant Cooper was the first on scene. He tackled. Now, listen, how many remember Dick Buckus? <laughs> okay. 
This was a tackle just like Dick Buckus, okay? He tackled and controlled the inmate until additional staff arrived. I mean, when I saw this on film, I kept hitting play, rewind, play, rewind. As well as secure the other inmates in the area. Once the situation was uncontrol under control, Sergeant Cooper ensured that our deputy and the inmate received proper medical treatment. During this quarter, Sergeant Cooper has displayed leadership skills, decision making, and serves as a role model to his subordinates. It is for these reasons we recognize Sergeant Ezell Cooper as the supervisor of the first quarter. Dick Buckus used to bite people, too. He what? Dick Buckus used to bite people, too. Hey, well, Cooper, he, he didn't bite there. anybody. No, no. no. Deputy of the first quarter, Deputy James Gettings. <laughs> Florida state statute mandates that all sheriff's officers serve civil papers, replevins, child removals of, or placements, writs of possession, and all manners of civil process. To accomplish this task, there are 10 full-time deputies, one part-time deputy, and one civil process server assigned to the civil execution unit. Deputy James Gettings has worked in the civil execution unit for three and a half years and is a valuable asset. He has studied and learned the Florida administrative rules and procedures for civil process and has educated himself with the Florida statute concerning service of civil process. Deputy Gettings has a 91% rate of served versus non-served papers. As you know, the papers this unit serves are civil in nature. Therefore, these deputies are not allowed to assess the same resources used in criminal cases when, in, when obtaining personal information for civil matters. Deputy Gettings cleverly and through his ideas have assisted him numerous times in finding people. For example, he used his computer skills to locate an address in Martin County for an out-of-state child pickup order. His investigation started with the father's Facebook page. Deputy Gettings created a fictitious Facebook page and was friended by the father. Once becoming a friend, Deputy Gettings found the father's business IP address and thus a residential address in Martin County. Deputy Gettings sent the new address to the Martin County Sheriff's Office and to the Department of Children and Families. Because of this, his persistence and resourcefulness, the children were safely recovered and turned over to DCF. When a vehicle for a plevin cannot be lo located, Deputy Gettings is the unit's bloodhound. He has recovered all vehicles where the owners have tried to hide them from us. We are proud to recognize Deputy Gettings as the Deputy of the Quarter. Congratulations. Just as a side note, last week he uh, did a writ on a, uh, that was a Dodge Viper, and what was the other car? I know there were two hot... What was it? Two vehicles were hidden in a garage. He found them uh, and uh, took both vehicles, but great job. <laughs> Law Enforcement Supervisor of the Year, Kurt Mitweed, Sergeant Kurt Mitweed. This is from last quarter. Yeah. From 2016 to 2017, Sergeant Rob Valentine spent a great deal of time in the hospital and out sick while battling cancer. During this time, Sergeant Kurt Mitweed spent many hours filling in and doing the job of two supervisors. These duties included staff evaluations, scheduling of in-service training, processing leave requests, creating the daily roster, and court scheduling assignments. Every day, court is open requires a schedule which consists of courtroom assignments for both courthouses, holding cell, assi holding cell assignments and door security post assignments of 38 deputies for up to 17 judges and magistrates. Unlike his own roster, Sergeant Mitweed must constantly check the dockets and the judges' calendars to make sure there are no new or canceled courts. When this happens, he works with the individual judicial assistants to ensure the courtrooms are not overbooked and staffed with appropriate deputies for safe operations. With continual movements of the judiciary, this is a daunting task. After the unfortunate and untimely death of Sergeant Valentine, the unit went several more weeks without a supervisor to replace him. During this time, Sergeant Midweed continued to carry the weight of both positions. He maintained an impeccable attitude and work ethic through, through it all, despite losing a good friend. 
Today, the role of the courthouse sergeant is now under the care of three sergeants. It is for these reasons that we select Sergeant Kurt Mitweed as supervisor of the year. Thank you, Kurt. <laughs> Distinguished Service Award, Sergeant Carlos Batenzas. <laughs> you brought your own cheering section. Mm -hmm. Always does. Oh. This nomination was written when Sergeant Batenzas was a deputy on April 24th at 1855. Then Deputy Batanzas was briefing the incoming supervisor at the end of his 12-hour shift. During the briefing, Deputy Batanzas smelled a strong odor of gas throughout the hallways of A-Wing. Deputy Batanzas called an Aramark supervisor and, and an on-duty maintenance person to apprise them of the situation. Both people told Deputy Batanzas to shut off the oven valves and the situation would fix itself. Deputy Batanzas knew this was not protocol and contacted Lieutenant Long. Lieutenant Long asked Deputy Knight to contact Fort Pierce Utilities. At 2018 hours, someone from the Utility Authority arrived and found two gas leaks behind the ovens for maintenance performed earlier that day. If not for the diligence and attention to detail of Deputy Batenzas to identify the problem and follow it through, the situation could have turned to a tragedy. Kudos for a job well done. Department of Law Enforcement is going to be done by Major Hardy, I believe. Good morning, everybody. Our first award is going to be Deputy John Lopez. <laughs> On January 5th, Deputy Lopez was dispatched to a traffic crash where a vehicle hit and dragged a pedestrian. When he arrived on scene, he saw a male in the roadway who was profusely bleeding from his leg. Deputy Lopez's main objective was to stop the bleeding to prevent the gentleman from dying. Two bystanders, one of them an off-duty nurse, were attending to the victim. The bystanders made tourniquets from the clothing. Deputy Lopez applied pressure to the victim's leg above the severed area. Knowing the homemade tourniquets could fail and the victim could die, Deputy Lopez retrieved his agency-issued combat application tourniquet secured it around the man's leg. This tourniquet stopped the bleeding until rescue arrived. Before transporting the victim, paramedics stated the tourniquet placed on the victim's leg saved, the, saved, the, uh, saved him from bleeding to death. Deputy John Lopez's quick and decisive actions helped save the life of the victim. Thank you, sir. Next award goes life saving for Blake Bearson. That's a rough way to get out oh, of work. I, <laughs> I mean, what the heck? Also involved in this life saving award was Tyler Witt, and Tyler Witt no longer works at the agency. So on November 29th, deputies Blake Bearson and Tyler Witt were conducting a crash investigation when they heard a call from dispatch about a man who was unconscious and not breathing. As luck would have it, the victim was one house down from the crash investigation. Deputies Bearson and Witt went to the residence and located the unconscious man. The man had no pulse and was not breathing. They immediately started CPR, and after a few minutes, the male gasped for air and started breathing on his own. The victim was rolled to his side to keep his airway open, but remained unconscious. Rescue arrived and transported him to the hospital. Deputies Bearson and Witt's actions, being in the right place at the right time, saved this guy's life. Thank you, sir. You can see he's always willing to give a hand. See that? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Our next award is a commendation to Eric Holbert and Austin Parrott. On April 26, 2018, deputies Eric Holbert and Austin Parrott were dispatched to a stabbing. On the way to the call, dispatch advised it was a teenage girl with a history of behavioral issues and self-cutting. The juvenile was acting out because her mother had taken away her cellular phone. Imagine that. She had a large kitchen knife and was cutting herself. 
On the way to the call, Deputies Holbert and Parrott had formulated a strategy. Deputy Parrott would be the communicator, and Deputy Holbert would be ready with his less lethal Sims gun. Deputy Parrott positioned himself within sight of the troubled teen, but out of harm's way. Deputy Holbert was standing around the corner, but out of sight with his Sims weapon. Deputy Parrott established a rapport with the girl who was brandishing a knife and bleeding from cuts she had inflicted prior to their arrival. After listening to the juvenile and showing empathy for her, Deputy Parrott convinced her to surrender the knife and allow herself to be taken into custody for medical and psychological treatment. With only seven months of experience and no crisis intervention training, Deputy Parrott was able to influence her to surrender. Both Deputy Holbert and Parrott executed their criminal justice duties in an exceptional, commendable manner. Thank you. Good job. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Unit citation to star team members Jose Angulo, Lieutenant Jimmy DeFonzo, Dante Hetzer Harris, Israel Oliveira, Brian Saliba, Cole Singley, Sergeant Andrew Sosby, which unfortunately his mother passed away on Monday, so he's out of state. Deputy Randy Walker, Sergeant, uh, I was fixing to promote you, Samantha. <laughs> Samantha Wheeler and Sergeant Rich Zerkowski. During the first quarter of the year, members of the STAR team issued 10 notice to appears, 20 warrant arrests, 50 misdemeanor arrests, 60 felony arrests, and recovered 10 firearms. That's, that's amazing. More than 40 of the arrests involved illegal street drugs. On a daily basis, the STAR team performs proactive patrols throughout the county. The team fosters a proactive, positive interaction between our agency and members of the public. In addition, the team assists various components with the agency, such as school resource, SIU, they, they help everybody. This quarter, they participated in many of the after-school pop-up parties throughout the county. On a monthly basis, they provide the Caravan for Christ escort. They help traffic with funeral. During the holiday season, you'll see them delivering food for families and participate in various parades. The function, the schedule, and the mission of the STAR team changes with little notice. Members work together, complete tasks assigned to the unit. The STAR team continues to provide safety to the community and positive relationships with the citizens of St. Lucie County. Thank you for a job well done. Thank you. Thanks, Z. Thank you. Our next unit citation will be for the traffic unit. Sergeant Jeff Buchanan, Dave Caglione, Lane Drotti, George Felix, Brett Hamlin, Greg Hayford, Todd Hogan, Michelle Nesmith, and Jason Self. I asked this question when I got here this morning. And I said, who really, who keeps, the, who keeps this unit together? And I think, the, I think Michelle keeps it all yeah. together. In 2017, the traffic unit had an increase in activity compared to 2016. Accident, accidents were up 30%. The unit wrote 2,551 citations, which was an increase of 27%. While in the state of Florida, had a 57% decrease. In addition, DUI arrests were up 70%. The traffic unit continues to educate the driving community throughout interaction, event signage, and enforcement. It continues to make the roadway safe to the citizens of St. Lucie County. Thank you for a job well done. Not only mentioning, we get constant phone calls from, from members throughout the community of problems. These men and women respond. Any River Drive has been a horrific problem. They have spent a lot of hours down there. Thank you very much. And just a side note, I think we worked 200 more crashes last year than we did the previous year, correct? correct. Somewhere around that. So spread Busy that unit. out. Busy unit. Thank you very much. Thanks, Michelle. Accommodation for Robert Doty, unit citation for the gang unit, Chris Jaden and Clay Mangum.
During the latter part of 2017, patrol deputies responded to 11 shooting incidents within the specific area of Sunland Gardens. Detectives Clay Mangrum and Chris Jaden recognized gang activity as a connection for these shootings. With the assistance of Robert Doty, who was assigned to the CID on light duty, they scoured social media and law enforcement intelligence for information. They identified key individuals connected to the shooting activity. In February of 2018, the gang unit organized an operation with the assistance of SIU, the STAR team, and focused on the gang activity, including their identif identified individuals. Several were arrested, including the targeted people they were watching. One of them being a high-ranking member of the 13th Street Gang was arrested on federal charges. Plus, numerous firearms were seized from known gang members. Two days after the operation, the shooting activity in Sunland Garden stopped. Thank you for your job well done. <laughs> Next up will be Captain Brian Hester. Good morning. Well, next I have the honor of uh, recognizing one of our volunteers and the volunteer of the year for 2017. And we all know that without volunteers, um, it would be tough to run the sheriff's office. They free up a lot of us to do things that uh, more important things or prioritize things, and they fill a, a huge role with the sheriff's office. So this morning I have the honor of recognizing our volunteer of the year for 2017, and that's Mr. Tom Mullen. Mr. Mullen, will you come up? <laughs> Mr. Mullen has been a faithful and dedicated volunteer with the St. Lucie County Sheriff's Office Parking Enforcement Officer, or been a parking enforcement officer since August 13, 2013. During Tom's tenure in this capacity, he has logged over 1,016 volunteer hours and has written over 261 parking citations, freeing up our deputies to deal with accidents, which we just talked about, that had increased, and other traffic-related issues. In addition to these efforts, Tom also decided to take on an additional volunteer duties and dedicates a tremendous amount of time in support of the Seniors versus Crime program. In this capacity, Tom oversees the mission and priorities set forth by the Florida Attorney General's Office in helping many of our local seniors seek help in trying to deal with scams and other frauds. Tom was also tasked to oversee all the new training of new volunteers in his work with the Seniors versus Crime program. Tom's standard of integrity and adaptability and ability to work with senior victims has made him respected and loved by both his peers and those who he has helped. Wayne Pacone, Regional Director of Seniors versus Crimes, was quoted as saying, I don't even need to come to his location very often because Tom always does such a great job and is always reliable. Congratulations to Mr. Tom Mullen as Volunteer of the Year for 2017. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, uh, at the conclusion of every quarterly awards, I talk about all the great things that uh, each one of you do in our community. Uh, not only are you doing great things, three of those uh, made the front page of local papers. The first one was the... Uh, Donate a Life uh, Luncheon, which was attended by uh, our own Captain Hester, made the front page of the paper. Uh, so another thing that's impacting our community. The SRD unit uh, did their uh, uh, law, or, um, active shooting training, which uh, made the front page of the paper. And uh, last but not least, our torch run and all the great things we're doing for Special Olympics made the front page of the hometown news. And, uh, of course, our own Energizer Bud Bunny Doris Tracy was uh, right in the middle of things. As always, I get uh, hundreds of letters, emails, telephone calls uh, complimenting your actions. This is uh, the small list or group that I received. Uh, there's three that I picked out that I want to share with you. This was an email sent in from a lady from Delaware. We would like the department to know how grateful we were for your assistance of Officer Clayton on Saturday when we experienced a flat tire on Route 1. Officer Clayton stopped to see if we needed help and changed the tire for us. We are seniors and really could not have done it without him. It's comforting to know that there are such caring people in the St. Lucie County Sheriff's Department. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Jan and Bob Schaefer from Delaware. 
Next was uh, a lady who uh, actually called in and uh, shared with uh, Tammy that her husband of 54 years had passed away. Uh, deputies Heather Wonderly and Alex Mercado responded to her home. She was very grateful for the way they handled her and her family. Her needs were met, and she was very appreciative for everything they did for her and her family. She mentioned the deputies were very good to them. She repeatedly thanked the deputies and praised our agency. Um, she wanted us to know how well they uh, acted, and God bless them all. And uh, the last one I want to read is uh, from a lady uh, here in Jensen Beach who uh, wrote a handwritten note. I was involved in an accident on Tuesday, January 16th. The police officer was on my mind ever since. The man was uh, totally capable and so kind to me. I just want to send you a note to let him know. Um, I was alone during this event because my husband of 51 years was homesick. This man represented the sheriff's office in such a magnificent way. His name is Deputy Hogan. I am so thankful for his courteousness and professionalism. I, uh, on scene, I thank them for serving all of us and pray that God will give you all protection in their duties. Uh, sincerely and thankfully, Linda Vandershot out of Jensen Beach. But, uh, you know, arresting people and uh, writing tickets is the easiest part of our job. Making a change or a difference in people's lives is the hardest, and that's what you all do each and every day that makes me most proud. And with that, we're going to have Chaplain Smith come up and close us out. To the honorees, thank you for what you do each and every day, on duty, off duty. God bless you all. And chat, let me go wake him up. Here he comes. Here he comes. Sorry. <laughs> I was deep in thought, weren't I, you? I was, leaked, I was listening to a lot of war stories back oh, here. Yeah. So. Yeah, so it's very exciting. Please bow your heads and pray for God's blessings. Dear Heavenly Father, may these men and women who we recognize today continue to walk in your light. May your loving and divine mercy be with them. Continue to bless them with the desire to serve through courage, knowledge, and integrity to protect our, 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 uh, our community. Bless their families, friends, and fellow officers, and all those who they hold silently into their hearts. May your loving protection and your hand be on their shoulders and protect them during their tour of duties. Return them safely home to their loved ones. We ask this prayer and all the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts in your loving and most blessed name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, child. Appreciate it. Okay, thank you, everybody.